right, so I don't know if that's all right or not. Can you hear me well? Yeah? Cool. So hi, I'm Dario, working on the uh, RCE team, HMH. We have a lot of three-letter acronyms over there. Um, anyways, we are actually building a um, car render for um, the next generation content that uh, HMH is producing. Um, so we are hiring, so if you like any of what you see here, you know, just contact us, honestly. Um, right, so our team works on um, React. We use uh, Redux, a couple of other things, and um, we've been trying something lately, uh, which is a bit of a challenge, I would say. And I don't know, how many of you like work on your teams with designers? So can you raise your hands, like say just, yeah, cool. Do we have designers here, by the way? Okay, uh, so <laughs> fair enough. Um, yeah, so uh, and what is generally the process when you work with these designers? Like what is your uh, workflow? Uh, could you raise your hand if like say when you're working with designers, you actually get them um, say, what do they do? Do they give you things? Do they give you like, a, I don't know, an illustrator file or whatever it is, like a sketch file or something like that, even like a drawn thing or is, is that what you see most times? Could you just raise your hand there, yeah? Right? The ones that didn't, like, what do you generally see? Like, do you, like, get them, do they actually code? Would they give you, like, markup? They do it themselves? Anybody? Yeah, sometimes, good. We have one here, too. Yeah, very good. No code, <laughs> no code fair enough, yeah. <laughs> have you ever tried even saying something to uh, one of your, you know, design by, by the way, they are my friends as well, I'm not, like, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> have, you, have you ever tried, like, telling a designer, hey, you know, would you like to tweak this thing yourself? What is it? like whatever class or something and you can change it here and there have you tried that yeah did it work did you get hit no all right so <laughs> yeah so well this dog is about that actually it's about what happens when we enable collaboration and we have it in the angle brackets because well we are doing react but like you could put it on whatever you want and it's about that collaboration with developers and designers so that's that's the step that i was just describing like most of the times at least what happened used to happen in hmh is that we had this handle uh, step. Essentially, like all of a sudden, designers would say, okay, here's my thing, I did it, it's done, you take it, do whatever you want. So there's this translation phase that we had to do with every one design that, that they gave us. And that was a bit of a problem, because then they say, oh, but that was on the file that was version one, two, three, and it's actually dot A, or whatever, didn't you see it there? So then they started using things like Zeppelin, which are all, you know, all good, and like there will be like a hosting for Sketch for ones that don't know it, and <laughs> Sketch is actually Illustrator in 2016. So a couple of things like that, right? And uh, like the bottom line with it is that it was very hard, and it is very hard when we are talking to designers that are working on their own silos to just kind of collaborate. Because at some point, they hand over a design, that thing becomes a live thing. We actually put it on our apps, and it's there on like, some client's thing running on its thing. And then they say, oh, but we want to change that color to blue. Well, why don't you do it yourself? And they just, you know, the answer would be like, we don't know where to start. And fair play to them. They just don't know where to start. And it makes a lot of sense that they don't, because all of our tools are pretty much ours. We have our code editors, whatever we use. We have our repos. We have the concept of it. You, you, were, you just recall there I was just saying about the versions of the files. That actually happens with designers. They have all these files as if we would have been before anything we would have used before, like version code, right? If you, if any of you was coding stuff back then, you would have seen that there was just we just kind of were writing different folders, copying things over, and so on. So you know now we wouldn't even think about it, right? But they just don't have those kind of things because it's not part of their workflow. So all of those makes it really, really hard to kind of work it out. So what I'm here to say is like, what if we could just like get rid of this handoff step? What if we just wouldn't have it at all? So what I'm trying to say is like, what if we could actually design as we build? And this is a bit of a concept that uh, we've been playing with for a while and uh, we've been like uh, dog fooding ourselves in your example and then uh, with guys here in HMH, we've been using that for about, what would that be like now, four or five months? Maybe something like that, yeah. In the very rough versions up until whatever we have now. And the idea is like, okay, so what if the first pixel that you put on screen is actually a thing that is gonna be carried over as n and it's not a throwaway. It's not a drawing on some sketch file. It's not a drawing on a piece of paper. It's actually a thing that you're gonna be using later and you don't need to throw it away. What if that would actually go live, right? So that's what we wonder. And like now the thing is, like of course, what are we talking about a unicorn or what, right? Because most of the times these things just don't exist. 
And you know, it, it's very hard. Like most of the tools that we would have seen that like when you actually work and, and produce like some auto-generated code is a mess and it's really hard to like follow. No developer wants to touch it, like, and I include myself. It just, I, I just don't want to have anything to do with that because there's no control. We don't have any degrees of control over it, right? I, I think constraints are good, but you know, there is a bit of a, a like, I guess, a boundary there. So, and, and another thing as well is that uh, most of the approaches and tools that we would see so far, they only empower one end. So if we think about tools like uh, whatever, say uh, on the flat prototyping area, which would be like in Vision, Sketch, or something like that, only like designers can actually put something together. Like I can't align that many things on a grid. So you know, essentially, it's really really hard to do those things. Now for them, it's very natural. They drag and drop. They move it here and there. They do all that kind of stuff, and it looks beautiful, and it's really really good for showing it to the client, for doing like a click through or whatever that is. Now on the other end then you know, we would have other tools that would create like all these, like, uh, say, widgets, and we would just throw them in. Uh, things that come to mind would be something like Sencha, I think it would have been back in the time, and like the likes of that, right? And, but the problem is that no designer can work with it because they just don't understand all the complexity that lies behind it. Like things like, say, all the cascading of the different themes that are applied to it. That's just absolutely madness for them. So most of the times, like, these tools are just empowering the one end. They are not really like looking at the team as a team and saying like we can actually build together. They're just going like, well, you go to this guy. And then all of a sudden some business folks say, oh, well, we have designers that can prototype the whole thing. Let's put it there and let's launch this as an app. Maybe. But like reality, and on the other end, right, then you have a lot of apps that are kind of like put together by like just kind of figuring it out with like us as developers in a way, right? So we just put forms there that are absolutely awful, have no sense of flow or anything like that. And I'm not saying that we do that all of us, right? But it tends to happen. And, um, and that's a problem as well, because that's something that a user just doesn't want to use. They just don't want to use it. They just go like, uh, no. So where do we meet? Where do we meet in that like, kind of sweet spot? What is that thing? So I had a thought a while back, like, uh, how many of you are actually like React users? So who like, would have been using it, trying it? Yeah, oh, we have a good number of stuff. Uh, the rest, have you heard of it? Like, seen it around, stuff like that, yeah? Cool. So uh, if you've seen React, React has a model that it presents that it actually says like, okay, everything is a component. And you know, when we when we talk in IT, essentially when we think about these components as like boundaries, right, in a way, we can conceive them as systems on their own. So we can say, okay, here's this component that deals with like, I don't know, I think in HMA jargon, the table of contents for my book, right? So this component will, do with the, will deal with the table of contents for my book. It knows everything it needs to know about it, and that's about it. Everyone else needs to know something about TOC or needs to render it, just go there and render that thing, and that will take care of it, right? So that's sort of one of the um, like promises that it tries to deliver. And it does actually that very well. Like uh, we, We've been using React uh, with a lot of success lately to actually encapsulate lots of features that can be um, easily ported from one place to another, right? And um, But there's the thing, right? So it's all good with React, but it's complex. So it might not be complex for us because we are used to writing code, but it's complex for designers. Like, uh, believe me, I try. I actually try to like, like just say, okay, hey man, but like, look, this thing is so simple. It just has like a thing, and you can just change it. No, it doesn't happen. The reason for it is because it just goes way too far into a land where they just they're just not really like they have way too many other things to do as well. You know, it's not just moving pixels. So, you know, there is a lot of things there that they are doing. There are a lot of things that they are doing. So, essentially, we need to, like, figure some way, figure a way to do it in common. And how, how, do, we, how do we work that out, right? So, so, we thought a lot about this problem. Um, like, I work very closely with a designer, which is a very good friend of mine. We've met, we know each other for about, like, five years now. And uh, we actually gave a talk about a similar thing, the beginnings of this, actually, in, in React.js a couple of months ago. And... And what we discovered is that we needed a common language, right? And I know what you're thinking, oh man, another DSL, come on, go away. And <laughs> but that's, that's, not, that's not what we are, what we are here for. Um, the idea is that this is, um, if we are gonna be collaborating and we are gonna be removing that hand of step, we need to meet somewhere in the middle, right? And, and the reason why we need to meet somewhere in the middle is because Believe me, we are missing out. By not collaborating with designers closely, we are really, really missing out. 
they have a lot of like knowledge around how things you know should work and so on and like all that kind of stuff that if we actually like like say get to close get to work closely with them we would learn so much about interactions and you know how to actually make our UIs better and all that kind of stuff and uh, funny enough that actually goes into the code that you write, how you organize your UIs, how you organize the backend of your UIs, and then your services, and whatever you would, you would do with that kind of stuff, right? And here's actually a funny example. Like, uh, how many of you use Flex when you build things? Yeah, many? Uh, no, good number. So I have a really hard time with Flex. I absolutely love it, but I think it's, uh, it's one of those things that is technically correct, the way it's written and all, but it's really, really hard to figure it out what it's doing, right? And uh, one of the examples would be like, say, flex direction row versus column, right? And how they stack things, how does it work? What do they do? I don't know, I have a really, really hard time with that. And we thought about that with my friend Tom, and like, we, we said, okay, you know, he was trying to grasp, like, you know, just get his head around, like, how this thing kind of works. What is it? How do I line, how do I put a grid, essentially, on what I'm doing? And we figured that, okay, well, maybe we can think in, in a slightly different concept. So, like we came at it at calling those things horizontals and verticals. And essentially, with that, you don't really have a lot of confusion. A designer knows what, knows what they do, knows that a horizontal will put things like this, and a vertical will put them like that. And yeah, it's the same concept, but it's just easier for both of us to understand. And we can actually talk the same language. And that has a really, really big win, not only for us as like a team, but also for the user. Because what that means is that then we will be delivering apps faster. And we would be, because we are talking that same language, we would also be more connected when we are putting these things together. And eventually it just, it just has a, a greater benefit overall. So I tell you now, this is not about unicorns. This is uh, DX. This is a designer and developer experience that we can work to make all of this happen. And there is a quote that I'm just gonna read because I don't remember very well, but like it's essentially, Design is not only how things look like, it's how things work. Job said that a while back. And it's actually very interesting because like when you ask like say uh, designers, you will get a lot of people telling you different things, right? Uh, many will tell you I'm not, I'm not a click monkey, so I'm not moving pixels here and there, right? And fair enough, they aren't. Um, and when you talk to say a new grid that is sort of coming, that is more around like industrial design and all that kind of stuff, they would tell you that they absolutely don't care how it looks, they care how it works. And I'd say we have kind of have to meet in the middle. But um, essentially design is about how things work. When we design our APIs, when we design our architectures for our applications, we are actually thinking about how these things work. We are not just putting a line there because we feel like it. We may do that with a semicolon or not, whatever. But like the rest of it, it doesn't matter. So you know, it does matter a lot how we actually like structure these things, sorry. So, and here's actually another interesting thing as well. How many times have you worked with designers and you find yourselves and then they are trying to overlay things and it just, just doesn't happen like that in the web? You know, we have a box model, unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever you want to call it, but it is what it is. And when the design that a design that, that things all the time. Anyways, yeah. so, so what happens is something really interesting when designers start actually looking at, um, looking at how things work in the target platforms, they start thinking with those constraints in mind. And that doesn't mean that they are less creative and they just can't like flip things around and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't mean that at all. It actually means that they will be more conscious about the decisions that they make when they make them. Because right now they know that if they put that thing there and that thing there, it just won't work. All of a sudden it will add like, I don't know, like 10 other weeks to the implementation that we're doing. Uh, not 10 weeks, but anyways, yeah. So yeah, so that's that. Design is not just what it looks like, it's how it works. And for that, um, this is a concept that I would like to introduce to you, is this thing that we use that it's called pages, right? And I figure I will share that anyways, and we'll see kind of what happens then. Um, so let me just kind of like mirror this, so it's just a bit easier. Boo, and when I come to show it's all broken. <laughs> <laughs> that happens all the time, believe me. Um, right, so. In the meantime, 
I think actually, yeah, we have Tom in here. So this is Pages, right? It's a collaborative environment for, um, for building applications, right? It's for building UIs. And it's done in a way that you have a, um, a common language, right? So essentially this common language, this, if you've seen, have you worked with Ruby, stuff like that? Yeah. Oh, sorry, man, yeah. So better? Yeah, cool. Um, right, so I'm just gonna like ask Tom. So this is an editor, right? Um, we are actually like, uh, this is a, a live um, uh, collaboration editor. So we can actually like put things together and just kind of make it, you know, happen like that and all that kind of stuff. Uh, there is clearly something going on here. I don't know what that is, but um, some kind of error or whatever. Um, the idea is that uh, in in pages, what we would do is we would write blocks, right? And this is a concept that both us and designers grasp in a way. And these blocks have like simple keys, and there are like some basic blocks like things like a text, an image, and the horizontals and the verticals that I was telling you about before and you saw above. And they allow us to like put together some kind of like a structure to our document or to our uh, page as we call it here. And then they allow us to like start building our UI in the different ways. So for instance, here's an example of something that we've been working with the guys in HMH. And this would be uh, one of the things that we've been doing for a while now. It's a it's a list of annotations, right? When you actually like write something on like a book and you select text and whatever, it lands on that list. So that's an example of that. This is all built in pages. And there is another one here that is actually when you are about to make that annotation and there is a pop-up and the pop-up pops and it does the thing and you select colors and whatever. And here we are seeing it in like two states. So similar to what you would do in like any design tool, you would actually be able to compare states, which is something that designers tend to do quite a lot and they can see them and see if there are any inconsistencies in what they are doing and all that kind of stuff. Now, back to this thing. Um, I don't know what's going on here, so I'm actually gonna try and reload and see maybe that fixes. <laughs> and yeah, that, th that is, there you go, beautiful. So, okay, um, <laughs> technology for the win. <laughs> so, uh, did I mention this is beta? Yeah, anyways. <laughs> so, um, hey, Google got away with that anyway, so. <laughs> right, so. So in this editor, we can actually go and um, and change things as we go and all of that. And then, you know, there is a question here, which is, okay, so that's, that's nice, but that's, you know, that's static. That's, what do I do with that thing, right? How do I consume it? How do I use it in my app? And like somebody said that I should actually drum rolls or something when I do it, but whatever. Here it is, essentially like, what happens with this is that you morph it. And by morphing, I don't mean Morpheus from Matrix. It's actually a thing that just changes something into the other, right? And it changes that pseudocode sort of that you are looking at, and it creates a React component, right? And this React component is as raw as it gets. It doesn't have clutter around it. Um, it just, it's literally a translation of your component to that with a couple of things that are changed here and there just to like make things easier, like we are adding fonts and a bunch of other things that would be kind of handy here. But at the bottom of it, like you are essentially uh, having a React component that you can work with. So why does this matter or why am I showing it to you? It matters because we can now constantly translate our components that we go building and we can build them with designers. A designer can come here and they can say, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and change that color. I can see actually that Tom put it on the, on the state here, so I'm just gonna go open that thing and yeah. So, you know, we can go ahead and change those things. A designer can change those things. We can absolutely forget about what that button looks like. It's freedom. And the, there is another thing to it, right? Let me just say, yeah. Um, we can chat here, by the way, but eh, whatever. Uh, it's sort of a side effect, I guess. Um, <coughs> so you wonder, okay, so okay, in an application, right, how do you use this? How do you use these things? And I guess that sort of like, um, that should actually uh, make us think about how do we work with UI? What is our UI? And one of the things that React put very clear is that a UI is a function of data, right? So if we think about it like this, we can say that, um, we can say that this would be something like uh, render data, right? So I'm gonna zoom that in. By the way, Tom is saying hi. 
he's in Spain, anyways, yeah. Whatever, so, you know, we can render data, right? And, and that's really what our views are. So our views are, in a way, just whatever props we give it. Now, props is a jargon of React, but in any other term, it's just whatever we can think of, right? A list of something, an object with some details, just a string, a number, whatever you want. And it outputs something that has a representation, it has a style, it has a bunch of other things, right? And so essentially what we've done in pages is that uh, we leveraged that model. And we use the concept of props. So for instance here, we have uh, props text. And if I change that, that actually changes my text in here. So I'm, what I'm gonna do now real quick is I'm just gonna go ahead and say, you know, hi. And you know, that's my text in there, like being applied to it. Um, now there's no use in that case for a fixed text. Many times we actually wanna get that from the outside, from whatever other data layer that we have. And we can do that through this model. So essentially what we define are these UI contracts. I think we need a better word for that anyways, but it's kind of like that in a way. It's an agreement that we have with our designers and our like the rest of our team as well, that this component needs these things to work. It need this one in this case needs text, it needs an icon, it's actually using as well like a background color and a background view. And as long as we feed those in, this thing will just work regardless of its shape. And the value of it is that we can automatically sync that with our application. If you wanna see that, come in me later. I think it will just make the demo probably a bit too long. Um, but all of that is, um, it can automatically sync with your application and then you just get code that just gets updated as you go making these changes and your UI is essentially always in sync. So that's the concept of um, Collaboration in pages. This is what pages is. Uh, if you have doubts about it, just you know, come and ask and all that. Can you show the state? Um, uh, yeah, we could show the state. Yeah. So, so there is this concept of state. I didn't really want to go there because it's a bit more probably like uh, into internal stuff. But like, essentially, the state means that uh, like if we see these two, um, we would see that they actually have like they say main and collaborating, right? So these are names that we assign to these things, and states are uh, sort of like props, but like demo props in a way. So you use them to get your component to specific point in time and you can have it look like whatever you want. So that, that's what it is really. In a way, when you are using that, that render function that we were talking about before, you would be passing those parameters in and this would be your, your contract in a way. So there is one thing though. This is a text editor. This has code, a black background, whatever it is. Many times designers fear that. We had that in HMH at some point, like, you know, designers would just jump on this and they would go like, no, nah, touching that, it's not drag and drop, I can't do it. And it's not because they are, they're just useless, it's not that, that has nothing to do with it. It's just that they are very used to tools that would be like, okay, I'm gonna resize this thing and do that thing and whatever and all that and it's all good. So how do we overcome that, right? So one of the, one of the things that we started is like, uh, this editor has like many of those as autocomplete, right? and it has a contextual autocomplete. So as you go type in things like whatever, align items, you will get the center prop, I, you know, just coming here. Yeah, and then you would just kind of get like the properties for align items or not. But there is a problem with that. How do they know in the first place that align items even exist, right? Most of us, when we're actually even looking for that, are we actually looking for align items or was it justified content? Align cells? I don't know. Anything, we don't know, right? So what do we do most of the times? I at least go to Google and I say, hey Google, what do I do with this thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we figure, right, that's, that's quite a natural way to do this, right? So, um, so today then I'd, I'd like to introduce you a concept that we're working on and that will hopefully change the way we uh, conceive documentation and all that pretty much forever. This concept is called Ash, right? I'm gonna reset this so it kind of fits there. And Ash is, you guessed it, AI, but it's not just a chatbot that you write and just spits bad random words at you. Uh, Ash is there to kind of help you code, to work with you as you go through things, not to help you go back to like some long list of documentation things that you need to remember where you look for your thing, how did you find it and so on. And this is a concept that uh, is still in the works. It's, um, it's a little bit functional, not really, uh, it has some, some aspects of it that are already working. And essentially the idea is that 
Hash is our answer for um, documentation and for allowing people that are not probably that technical to actually get into this and to be able to use it. And so far, the response we had was very positive on it. Um, like there is a lot of like interest from like we are actually testing this on small groups, and there is a lot of interest from people to actually like see how they can collaborate with this in a way. Um, so things like you can see there on the oh it's actually it's me there. There you go. So um, so you know you could potentially have a conversation with this thing, and um, I still don't know how to call it, but. Um, and essentially, it, it would help you get through, like, okay, what's a block? You know, how do I put this thing in the middle, for instance? Things like that, right? Things the way the way that we would ask it, not the way that the official MDM documentation would read. So that's Ash. That's coming down the line. And uh, yeah, if you want to know more about it, just give me a shout anyways. And that's how we are uh, planning on, like, working with designers and just getting them to not to fear this and to be able to collaborate. Now, there is another thing. We are a team. So when a designer gets stuck, what do we do? We reach out and we help. And we say, hey, man, you know, what's going on here? You know, this, this thing, something wrong, can we help? What do we do? All that kind of stuff, right? So we can do that all the time. And, you know, we can collaborate on this. We can do it in real time on the editor and whatever it is. And Pages is an approach. It's our take at it, right? Um, I, I imagine that, you know, after like these, there are lots of other things will probably happen. And so far we, we haven't seen anything that matches it. I don't think there's any other tool out there that kind of delivers that experience for both in the same world, kind of putting everyone uh, in the same room. Uh, we're on private beta now. If somebody wants to uh, give it a go, join us on Slack with pages today and, you know, we'll, um, we'll let you know when that's there. And if you feel like you need to try it now, okay, we can do something. And yeah. But that's, that's that, I guess. So I don't know if you have any questions. Otherwise, thanks. The question is uh, uh, how to transform that YAML syntax to the HTML or, uh, or React or probably could it be useful, useful with Angular or any kind of framework that actually consume uh, HTML with CSS rules? Yeah, so I think I, I probably wasn't like clear on showing that. Um, let me just actually put it side by side so you can see it more clear. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll do that now, thanks. <laughs> right, so we just teleport into that mode and see the two editors side by side, hopefully. Great, yeah, cool. Great. So this is uh, the page view on the left-hand side, right? That's the YAML that you were talking about. And this is the morph view, that's React. This is, this is not YAML, this is React code. Sorry if it's not very, uh, is that better, yeah? Well, for now I see, but I see that you use directly styles without any classes. Yeah, so in pages we are using inline styles. Um, there are a couple of reasons for that. Um, mainly because it uh, composes well. And the other thing as well is that we are not only targeting web, we are also targeting native devices. <laughs> Having said that, um, in when you are uh, building your code, uh, there's nothing preventing like a compilation step that would extract those styles and put them as like a regular CSS, right? So they wouldn't be on your components, they would actually be like compiled and they would live in like CSS on its own. And to answer the second question on, on Angular or whatever it is, uh, essentially like totally, like uh, if there is any other uh, target platforms that you wanna see this working with, just come talk to me, uh, it's absolutely doable. Okay, thank you. Okay. You got something there? Yep. 
Hey, Dario. Um, my name's Alan. Uh, thanks for that. It was really interesting. Um, I'm always interested in how you know you can bring designers and developers closer together because I think it really improves productivity and, um, as you say, collaboration. But I, so I have a question, kind of a two-parter on on this, kind of from a developer point of view. Um, do you see this, uh, it's at the moment it's in a web page, do you see this mainly being used by designers and handing off to developers the generated component in React? Like, do you see the developer using it as well as part of their IDE workflow? Or, um, and then uh, following on from that, version control of you know what's being produced by it, how does that work? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, to the first question, no, I see it used by both. Um, we are actually on the RC team at HMH. Uh, it's like mainly developers using it, and we are like bringing designers into it as we, you know, go in a way. Um, so it's definitely a tool for both. The reason for it is because sometimes you will be um, interacting with like, uh, or you will be defining all these props, and you will have a bit of JavaScript here and there. Maybe it really depends. Up, it's up totally up to you. Uh, generally, we didn't really have much JavaScript on these things. Uh, pretty much none, I would say. Um, but there are a lot of things that say, for a start, that we know that they don't know, right? And we can ease it in. Like, say, everything around how we lay things out, you know, all the like CSS stuff and whatever. And th the collaboration actually can just make all of that faster. So, yeah, it's a bit of a mix, I would say, uh, in, in regards of how it's used. Now, regarding versioning, um, there is one thing that is uh, pretty cool about this, and is that uh, I guess that, that could actually be answered in two questions. Uh, one is that you can just like copy this and just put it into another page, and that would just work, right? So you can duplicate this document, and it just it's transferable. Um, and if you want, that's if you want to do say some kind of like A/B versioning, right? And you actually want to <coughs> go ahead and like say I want to do a variation of this. Now that's one side of version. The other side of version is probably code control, right? I imagine, like uh, committing into a repo or whatever that is. And so for that regard, uh, pages doesn't really dictate what you do with it. Um, all the code is stored. Uh, we are using uh, Couch as a backend. So you do have version of documents, and that's something that at some point may kick in as a visible feature in the UI. Um, but in the meantime, what you would do is, uh, I'm just kind of, just probably show this here. Um, so this would be the, the pages app, right? And yeah, that's probably small. Is that better? Yeah. One more? Yeah. Better? No? Yeah? Maybe that? <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> so uh, so this is this is the page app itself, right? Um, and in here we have a folder called uh, use pages, right? And this has a bunch of files, right? Uh, let me just go ahead and open like uh, one, for instance. We were actually working on this button here. So that's called the X. Uh, I don't think I actually have that yet because I didn't pull. So I'm going to actually sync it. Um, and essentially, that will actually bring the files from that thing that we were talking about. That's the auto syncing feature that I was talking about before. And when now we actually go to uh, use pages DX, you will see that I actually have two files, right? JS and page. So let's go first into page. That's the YAML code that we were just looking at is there, so it's yours. You can version it in your into your own uh, repo and do whatever you want with it. It's actually great when things fail. And then the next one is the state that is below. So both actually both are those are the two things that you need to put together your page again. And then the next one is um, actually uh, the uh, JavaScript file, which is the React component, right? And now we can just like bring that into our app and just use it. So yeah. So that's like version is, uh, I would say in this case, is up to you how often you pull things into your app and how do you kind of work it out like that. So from a developer perspective, when I'm actually adding like logic and you know functions to it, where do I d do I do that in the in pages and it gets transpiled into morphed into the React or do I do that in the morphed React? Uh, that's absolutely up to you. Uh, like for instance, uh, I don't know, if I were to take this component, right, and I would say, okay, I need, like say, where do I get that text from, right? So say I get that text from like some thing that I get on a JSON file somewhere else, right? So uh, that service returns the text and I just like fit it in. So what we would generally do is we would actually like wrap this view with some other component that takes care of dealing with that logic outside of pages, right? And we wouldn't put that logic in pages. It's not that you can't, you can, um, but 
in all fairness, I, I don't know, so far, now we built this thing, right? And of course, you could go ahead and just do whatever you want in it, just put all the logic you want. But I would probably recommend a little bit against that so far. And because it's just that there is like, um, there are a lot of things that kind of go outside of the realm of the, the, the UI and so on that could be best handled outside. So, you know, having said that, you could like, you can, uh, you can definitely extend the lifecycle methods here. So, you know, you can add like a, like a whatever component did mount or whatever you want. You can do all those sort of things. Uh, they are definitely not exposed by default because it's one of those things that will drive, you know, designers mental. Um, but, you know, there are those things that you can do. And I guess it's up to you where you draw a line. Now, so far, we've chosen to keep all of that outside of pages. It's for our strategy, I guess, for sure, yeah. Cool. It so works really well for that other case, I guess. Cool. Yeah. So you could, even you could easily just put in simple hooks for, in, in a simple case, a button on press. You can, you know, have that hook there and then take care of it in your kind of container components. Yep, yeah, yeah, absolutely, cool. yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah, one of the things that the guys are saying that we do as well is that you could pass data back or from whatever or services or you know we do all that kind of stuff as well all the time. Mm. Any other questions? May as well as Pizza's not here, so. Um, how many how many people are actually using this day today? Like how many designers and? Uh, so right now we are what are we like uh, five six developers right? Yeah. And four designers, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, actually, yeah, that, that's on the HMH team, and then we would be using it with Tom every day, and like, yeah. So is the plan then to roll out to other teams? or is Yeah, that, is yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. We are looking at, there are a couple of teams in HMH that are potentially looking at using this as well. They are doing um, native apps, and uh, because we render to native as well, um, it's, you know, it's something that just doesn't matter, really. It's, it's, it's yeah. you know, kind of transparent, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm just curious, what is the feedback of designers about your solution? Well, what do you think about it so far? Lots of different things. Um, at the beginning, when we introduced it with designers in HMH, we had a JSON document, so it would look more like the state, right? And that was absolutely mad. Because, you know, JSON has all the curly braces and, you know, the brackets and whatever, and they all close, and then all of a sudden you had, like, this trail of things closing, and there was no nothing to read in there, so it was really hard to follow. Uh, our designers in HMH uh, were fortunate and unfortunate enough to start with this from the beginning. So they saw all the changes, right? And uh, for a while, we also kind of kept them isolated from it because then they they were kind of like getting burned down by it because there was a lot of like uh, churn, essentially. We were iterating quite a lot on it. And then we brought them in um, with this new syntax and all the other helpers for them, like say, autocomplete and Ash that is coming together and you know a bunch of other things. And that changed their perspective on it. Uh, essentially, that uh, that's actually making them like, um, yeah, yeah, I can work with this thing. Like the, um, I guess the key here is what I ask our designers was, so okay, so do you want to be in control of this UI or do you want to lose control as soon as it gets out of sketch? That's the question. If they actually want to build this thing, if they want to collaborate with you and make the app, and not only just like you know move some pixels around on the screen they will definitely engage. And, you know, then it's up to us. How we make them, do we make them feel at home or not? And, you know, all that, all those kind of things, I guess. Yeah. So if anyone is interested in, like, you know, using this in your teams, just give me a shout anyways. And, you know, you can also join Slack, use pages today. And, yeah, it's all there as well. Yeah. <coughs> Any other questions? No. All right, thanks, Tiger. Thank you.